this is awkward. No, no, I haven't lost my mind. This is gonna be a great video, I promise. Whether you're a Bronco fan or a Jeep fan, I'm gonna give you my honest review comparing these two off-road vehicles. Buckle up, Buttercup! We all know I am the Bronco babe. Me and Buttercup and the kids, we've had a blast. We've done so many things with our Outer Banks. And here we have a Jeep. Not just any Jeep Wrangler, but a Rubicon 392. So we're gonna compare both of these. And I know there are some major differences, but I'm talking about the day-to-day -day kind of stuff. Daily driving, going to get groceries, all the stuff with the kids. We're gonna compare the two. Who's gonna be the clear winner? Am I gonna convert to a Jeep girl? <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get started with the interior of the Jeep because I feel like that's where the major differences lie. For those of you that are true-hearted Bronco people, you're like, ah, oh, what's a 392 Rubicon? I'm like, oh, I don't get it. Well, you know how Raptor is to Bronco? That's kind of what this is. This is the best of the best of the Jeep. And I forgot to mention, I didn't buy this Jeep. Now I'm driving this around to get product ideas because 21 Off-Road is going to expand in more than just the Bronco market. And they all know that I'm true Bronco girl. So hey, let's give her a Jeep for a little while so she can come back with some feedback, some product ideas. And that's kind of where I landed. But I really wanted to see what the Jeep life is all about. This is the first time that the Jeep has had a competitor, you know, Bronco, and I feel like it's going to up the Jeep game for those Jeep fans. I'm gonna go through this and tell you as a Bronco owner, what is different about the Jeep. So whether you are looking at trying to get a Jeep or a Bronco and you don't know how to decide which one, I'm gonna show you some of the major differences as a Bronco owner coming into a Jeep that a normal person doing a review video may not realize. I've driven this Jeep for a couple weeks. I have not driven my Bronco and it's been very difficult, but I wanted to get a true feel of what are some major differences that some people may not notice. One thing that is probably pretty evident between the Bronco and Jeep doors are the mirrors. If you are somebody that's planning on taking the Jeep doors off, the mirrors come off with it. Where the Bronco, the mirrors are on the vehicle, not on the door. So that is kind of a deal changer for me going off road or having the doors off. You'd have to have your mirrors off too and get, you know, extra mods to accommodate a mirror. So uh, Bronco win on that one. A few things that kind of, I don't want to say irritate me, but differences are like these canvas straps holding these doors on and just the fact on how the doors are shut, how the hinges are, like when you're inside the vehicle, you can see the door latch from the inside of the vehicle and it just seems kind of cheap to me. This is close to a $100,000 Jeep. I should not have to see the hinges to keep the doors closed. Like I shouldn't have to see that. There are some things that Jeep did do right with this setup here of just of the door. The handle placement is far better than the Broncos. I feel like the Broncos handles are a little bit too low, especially if you have a raised Bronco. This is at a good location. So if you're trying to get into a raised vehicle, you can grab it and get into the vehicle. You can do the extra grab handles in the Jeep like you can with the Bronco. I would do that if this was mine. I just like having lots of handles to help myself get in. This is the Mac Daddy of all Jeeps. And I just have a high package Outer Banks, not the Mac Daddy of Broncos by any means. But one thing that the Bronco wins hands down is this whole infotainment system. Look at this, my phone is almost the size of this screen. Not only is the screen not the greatest, but the camera sucks on this thing. You don't get a 360 camera, and at night, this camera is horribly pixelated. Bronco wins hands down in that department. This whole like thing here is just, there's a lot of stuff. There's also not a lot of storage space. You don't have um, and built in Picatinny reel or whatever you want to call it, you know, that little uh, accessory mount that comes in the Bronco. You don't have anything like that made in this Jeep. I also find the shift knobs in this kind of in a weird location, but this thing is ginormous. Like this handle is huge. And then you've got the four wheel drive here. It feels just a little dated to me. 
Another thing is there's no modes, no goat modes. You don't have sport mode, eco mode, rock crawl mode, or anything like that. You just have, you know, four high, four auto, part-time, neutral, four, four low. I think I already said that. And then all of your lockers and auxiliary switches are all right here, not up here like in the Bronco. As far as cup holder and storage space, I'm gonna say they're about the same. I mean, you do lose a little bit of storage in the Jeep here because you do have like a compartment here in the Bronco and then you have that option for the rails. Um, so there's a little less storage space here. However, on the doors, you have the same kind of netting material as the Bronco does. And then cup holders and stuff in the back are about the same in the Jeep versus the Bronco. Now this has got the leather package. I don't know enough about the Jeeps to know if if you get cloth and all that, if you get cup holders or not, I don't know. I'm just going based off this one because I feel like this is the most optioned Jeep that you can get. Another highly talked about subject in the Bronco community is the lack of lighting. Now there are solutions coming out like the 21 off-road lights, but stock, you have more light on the interior of your Jeep versus the Bronco. Granted, you do have this big bar, which it's not a big deal to me. Like I really love the whole sky view with the Bronco. Um, but the Jeep does not have that. You have this big bar here. So with interior lighting, the Jeep wins. One thing that the Jeep wins hands down, at least this one, I don't know if all trim levels have this, but the speakers and the sound is far better in the stereo than the stock Bronco. Another cool option that Jeep offers that Bronco does not offer yet is this convertible button. Now this is technically like, I guess a hard top because it's got the hard sides and everything and hard like up here, but this has the option to have a soft top that converts into a convertible all the way back and you can see the sky from the front seat and the back seat. Overall, I like the layout of the Bronco better than the Jeep. I do like this handlebar here above the glove box, but look at this. Look at the size of this. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Look how little this is. You can't fit anything in there. Ah, you know when I just said that the storage is about the same in the Jeep as the Bronco? I take that back because I forgot about how little that glove box was. As far as the center console storage, you do have like this two levels here, but it's not as deep. I used to have the center console vault in the Bronco, which was nice. Having something like that in here, I think would take away so much space. You wouldn't be able to fit anything in it. So. I definitely take back the storage space in the Jeep and the Bronco is about the same because it's not. The Jeep has less storage space in the front area than the Bronco. I think that's enough up here. Let's hop in the back. You know what? I don't spend a lot of time in my back seat, but you know who does? My kids. Let's get them out here, get their feet back. All right, we got my munchkins in here and I'm gonna give them my microphone. We're gonna tell everyone your thoughts about the Jeep. Could be good, bad, and I think we've talked about some of these things just driving around in it. I like how it goes so fast, and I like how the roof goes like a convertible. The thing that I really do like is the um, middle seats are the size of the big seats. They're a little bit bigger? Yeah. I also like these air vents. The vents, okay, Kyla? And I also like these plugs. Okay. Right. Things I don't like about it is I feel like the door doesn't like open very like wide. I don't really know like if it's just me. Um, but also the seatbelt isn't attached to the chair. It's like attached to like this thing and it just like makes it hard to grab it and stuff. Uh, back here the vents are actually movable and there's actually vents back here. Yeah. I have a big question for you guys. Would you rather mom keep a Jeep or keep a Bronco. Bronco, 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 sure. Bronco. Mustang. Yeah. Bronco. Do you guys like the comforts of the Bronco versus the Jeep better? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. You guys can go back being kids. Whee! Thank you. Who wins the backseat challenge? Is it the Bronco or the Jeep? I don't know. I don't spend enough time in the backseat, but according to my kids, Bronco is a winner there. That's enough with the backseat. Let's check out the trunk space. Trunk cargo space is very important to me. I go to Costco, I'm shopping, I got these three kids, I got hockey sticks, I got all kinds of stuff to worry about. And then I open this up and I just see wasted space or not utilized great 
space. Right off the bat, the first thing that I noticed in the Jeep versus the Bronco is this roll bar area. This is far in, very far in. Where the Bronco, it's gonna connect here like to the frame of the vehicle, so you're losing a lot of space. Now, I, there is a subwoofer here. To me, that's not like wasted. I think that is a great addition. And I don't think that's how it is for all the Jeeps. I'm assuming it's a package deal. However, this is enough trunk space for a family. I do feel like I can fit groceries in here and fit things that I need. I just think the Bronco has a little bit more space up here and it's just a better fit. But I think I covered the major differences on the interior of the Jeep versus the Bronco. And I think now it is time to talk about the exterior. As you can see, it's green. Green is maybe my new favorite color. This is where I'm gonna probably get hate. And this is completely personal preference. I'm not hating on the Jeep. Looks wise, I just love the way the Bronco looks. You've got the bumper here, the Jeep, this big gap, and then this like spacing thing here, and then just the grill. And I just don't like the looks of the Jeep very much. I think they have improved. I think it looks much better than what it used to look like. I just think the looks of the Bronco is just so much better. Please don't hate me, Jeep people. We're back in the Jeep because I wanna talk about the driving experience. I do like that. Let's just get that out of the way. I like that. That is a hands down pro of the Jeep 392 is the sound and the speed. And when you press on that gas pedal, how this thing just lifts up, woo! Mama likes that. But it's also a downfall because it could get me in trouble and get me some tickets. It did not because I'm a responsible driver. However, it is very tempting. Although I love the sound and I love the speed of this thing, I've driven this as a daily driver. I've driven it as a road tripper. I think the longest amount of time I've been in here solid is about three hours. I've driven it to the city. I've driven it to the grocery store, Target, you name it. I've been using this as a daily driver. And to compare this to the Bronco, here's going to be my most honest review. And I, I think even if you are a Jeep fan, you're going to, you're going to see that this is true. If you ever drive a Bronco, this thing isn't even in the same league as the Bronco as a daily driver. Driving this on the highway or on the roads, I always feel like it's kind of gliding. I'm always having to correct to stay in a straight line. And I know that has to do with the live axle and you know, that's a pro to Jeep people. But if you're gonna be using this as a daily driver, coming from the Bronco to this, it just doesn't drive that great. I would prefer driving my Bronco any day of the week than driving this. I hear a lot of Jeep fans that say, oh, the independent front suspension is lame, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not, it's fantastic. That Bronco drives like a car should on the road. And you know what else this Bronco does? It climbs racks and it goes over curbs and it does all the stuff that a Jeep can do. Can it do it as good as a Jeep? I don't know. I've never driven this Jeep the way I have driven my Bronco, but I have driven my non-locker, non-sway non bar disconnect Bronco, my mall crawler Bronco like a Jeep, okay? I'm just saying like a Jeep. And that thing is freaking capable. I think I have proven that the mall crawler Outer Banks can do so much. So if you are using this as a daily driver primarily, which I think most people with their Jeeps and their Broncos, it is a daily driver primarily. Go Bronco all the way. The Bronco is just better on the road. This was the only kind of vehicle you could buy that offered what the Jeep offers. Doors off, top off, off-road, on the road. However, Bronco came to the market and gave Jeep a run for their money. And I think there are a lot of things that the Jeep needs to upgrade to start competing with the Bronco. The main thing is like this infotainment system, no sort of modes, um, and just the drivability on road. Do I think Jeep's gonna, you know, include an independent front suspension on the Jeeps like the Bronco? No, I don't. But I think there are things that they could do to better compete with the Bronco. I mean, you're already starting to see so many Broncos on the road. 
it's just good for even the Jeep fans. Like it's going to make Jeep improve things that the Bronco does better. It's a win-win for everybody, whether you're a Bronco fan or a Jeep fan, it just makes the market a little bit better. They can keep competing with each other and then we reap the great benefits of that. Am I a converted Jeep girl? No, no, good try. I really went in with an open mind. I really went in wanting to love the Jeep. I think I have a newfound like for the Jeep that I didn't have before because it's been a while in my adulthood since I've been behind the wheel of a Jeep. However, I miss the Bronco. I miss driving it. There's so many comforts of it that the Jeep does not have that I don't think I could switch from Bronco to Jeep. I hope this review helped some of you make a decision if you're on the fence about a Jeep or a Bronco. This is just my honest feedback as a mom of three. Yes, I am a through and through Bronco enthusiast, off-road enthusiast. However, if you're looking for a daily driver vehicle that has great comforts, but off-road capability, the Bronco wins hands down. As far as looks, I mean, look at Buttercup, she's sexy. I'm really excited that I got to drive the Jeep to see the major differences. I think Jeeps are awesome. I think it's awesome to be out with Jeep people, Bronco people, FJ people, tacos. Like, I think we all share a common love of off-roading. And I know there's a lot of like versus Jeep versus Bronco, but I think we can all come together in a community and just enjoy each other and see the pros and cons of each of these vehicles. Be sure to like and subscribe. Maybe I'll take this thing off road. Maybe I should send it. With that engine, that could be dangerous. I'm a Bronco girl. I can't change it. Until next time, buckle up, buttercup.